What is up everybody? It's the Don again coming to you to talk about the newly announced uh, Asus Zenfone 3. Now this is a small phone that came out, uh, the Zenfone 2, uh, and maybe even a phone before that, uh, that has come out from Asus and is just, to me, taking the market by storm. Um, I felt like there was always a need for a really nice but inexpensive phone that was able to give you good performance but didn't break the bank, um, but also wasn't you know just a cheap junk phone. And the Zen phone was able to provide that for me astonishingly with the Zen phone 2, which is my current phone. And I ended up switching to the Zen phone 2 from the Samsung S6 Edge because I just wasn't happy with it. It just didn't feel like the phone I was looking for. Um, some of the gripes with the Zen phone 2 had to do with uh, the camera and the way that it felt, the overall feel, the display, it definitely was some getting used to. But it looks like they're gonna change that a lot with the Zenfone 3 lineup. Now, if you look here, you see that they have three different lines, uh, three different models more so. And this is all on the uh, GSM Arena, and I'm pretty much taking it, taking it for a fact that this is everything that the phones are gonna have. I've done a little bit of research on Engadget, and they've had a hands-on review, so if you want more pictures, details, or anything like that, link will be in the description below so you can check out the Engadget uh, up close and personal with the Zenfone 3 to see more details of what it looks like and to see if I'm incorrect about any of my information or about anything that's said here. So about them having three different models, that speaks really well to me because when I bought the Zenfone 2, I was really excited about it, but I would have gone, you know, if they had a phone model that was a little bit more money but was better in every way, I would probably buy that one instead. And that's exactly what they're doing here with these models. The base model looks fantastic. The ultra model is a phablet phone, uh, and the deluxe model is right up my alley. It's everything I'd want in a phone, and it's got the quality, the specifications, the connectivity, everything, but the price is substantially increased from their lesser expensive models. Now the rundown of pricing, what I was able to find, is that the base model, the one to the left here, is gonna be 249, and this is all USD America pricing. Um, the Zenfone 3 Deluxe was gonna be 499, which is very large, and the Ultra was going to be 479, and there's some more information as to why those prices differ even though one's a deluxe and one is an ultra. Now this isn't an in-depth guide, it's not anything that's going deep into some information that hasn't been uncovered. This is just my first initial thoughts on the phone itself, because like I mentioned, I'm, an, uh, I'm a Zenfone 2 user, and this got me really excited to see all the new developments that they've had with this phone. And I definitely plan on picking up one of these phones. I'm not sure which one. I really want to get the Deluxe, but at $499, it's definitely a little bit steeper than what I'd want to spend. One of the major draws that I had of the Zenfone 2 was that they didn't have any contracts from the carriers. And you just, I mean, as long as you're using the SIM, which I am on the AT&T network, you're golden. You can just plug it in and go. And that's what I loved about buying the Zenfone 2 for $299, and I owned it, and I was ready to go. And this phone, the Zenfone 2, is a fantastic phone that I would recommend to anybody looking for a nice, capable phone. But the camera's not that great, but I can get into that later if I do in this video. Some of the other things that I love about um, the Asus platform is that they're very easy to root. I was able to root mine right away and get on it, remove the very minimal amount of bloatware, and just increase the, the phone's performance substantially just by doing so. So that's something that I really like. They seem to take that away a little bit more with the uh, Samsung phones. Um, my wife has an S4, and there's no real way to root that right now with the newest 5.0 update because of the security settings that they put in place. And nobody's trying to because that phone is a couple of generations older. Uh, the S6, I never got around to trying because I only kept it within that 14-day duration that I could in order to keep it or return it. And so that's something that 
you know, I, I don't know if you can, but I know with the Zen phones, very easy to do, and I absolutely love it. All right, so let's get into the specifications a little bit. Now, here's a list of the, run, the rundown of what the phone line, I guess, currently is going to be offering. And you can go to the GSM Arena and see this stuff for detail in yourself. I just wanted to point through some of the things that personally excite me that I really like. Now, the main model and the main one I'm probably going to be keeping an eye on is the deluxe version. Even though it's a higher price point, I think that's the one I'm eventually going to want to get. Now, potential release dates on these, not exactly sure. Status is all coming soon. Like I said, they were just announced. Um, they might be coming out in a few months. I'm not exactly sure. I know that two months after the Zenfone 2 was announced, it was released. So maybe it's a similar time frame. I'm not exactly sure. But some of the stuff here, you know, it was just announced, coming out soon. Uh, something to keep in note here that I think is actually really cool. If you look at the weight of these phones, um, 155 grams, 170, and 233 grams. The really cool part about this is they've increased the screen size on the phones, but kept the weight less. So the Zen Phone 2 weighed 170 grams, the same as the Deluxe, at a smaller screen. And this smaller screen, the 5.5 inch, is only 155 grams. So that's that's pretty cool. I like that they're cutting the weight by using better materials, thinner materials, stronger materials, all that stuff. That's really cool to see uh, as technology does advance, that they are genuinely coming out with a better screen and just a better phone as well. Um, and on to the screens, I really like that the Deluxe has an AMOLED display instead of the IPS displays. I feel like that will actually help a lot of the, uh, the, the clarity and just the lacking feel in the Zenfone's 2 screen. So I'm excited to see that, and I think that'll be, that, that should be quite the upgrade. Um, and then the other ones are both, you know, the IPS panels. And all three of these phones, even the Ultra phone, are just a 1080 display. And that's completely okay. You don't need anything higher. You don't even need a 1080 display on your phone. And it's usually just for marketing that they give you those gigantic screens. Uh, you know, it's like, oh yeah, this screen can show you 2K, it can show 4K, you know, and you might get some screens later on if the race keeps continuing, it can give you 8K video. But what's the point? There's no point. I mean, it not only does it suck your battery life more, but your eyes can't really tell the difference between the two. If they're using a good panel, that's the biggest thing that you're going to notice, not so much the resolution. Now, if you're going back to the previous days of using the 720 display, yeah, you'll notice the difference between the 720 and the 1080, even on the small phones, with typical use. Uh, if you have the phone for a year, a 720p phone for a year, you're not going to notice it after that year until you compare it with something else. You're not going to really see what you're missing. So on to the actual uh, protection and everything that they have on there. Uh, they're upgrading the Corning Gorilla Glass to 4 on the Deluxe and the Ultra version, which I think is fantastic. And they're still sticking with Corning Gorilla Glass 3 on the base, which I completely agree with because if it's a cost-cutting measure, you know, getting that phone out there, an upgraded phone for less money than the base model was for the Zen Phone 2, I mean, I'm all for that. I think that's fantastic, and it opens up the doors to a lot of people to be able to get and appreciate this phone. And then on to the UI that they're using, uh, the Asus Zen UI. I like that UI. There's a lot of different opinions on that, and same with any other user interface, your, mi your mileage is going to vary. You'll like it, you won't like it, you'll get used to it, you won't get used to it. It's hard saying. I love the UI. I think it's fantastic. I love almost everything about this phone, as this review is probably going to talk about. And I love that they're going to the Android 6.0, uh, giving you the newest Marshmallow update. That's always fantastic. It seems like they're not going to be behind. You know, they're not releasing it with the previous version with updates to come, but they have it with the latest and greatest version of the Android operating system. So I think that's really cool. The interesting part about the Zen Phone 2 is that it had an Intel quad-core processor. At least the, the my model that I had the 299 model, and it had the Intel quad-core processor and 4 gigs of RAM. They've switched boat on that a little bit, where they're going now to the Qualcomm, uh, dual-core, quad-core, octa-cores, whatever they're going to be doing with these configurations here. And I think that's a pretty good move, because the Snapdragon architecture has proven to be much better than the Intel architecture. And I don't know if the Intel was just less expensive at that point, if they got a deal with Qualcomm at this time, whatever the case was. 
but I like that they're going to that because um, I think it also uses maybe a little bit less power, but I'm not sure on that point. One of the great things about the Asus Zenfone 2 was that you had the ability to use a micro SD card. Now that's something that's been you know coming and going on these different phone manufacturers of a cool feature or a lost feature or a brand new cool feature that was gone but is now back because they magically decided to do the design a little bit better. So Asus had that with their micro SD slot up to 128 gigs and I've got a full 128 gig in there so I absolutely think it's really cool that they had that option and you know you're able to just cram it full. So I like that they still have that and it looks like the Ultra is gonna have a 200 gig um, which uses SIM slot number two. I don't exactly understand that, but I mean, that that's cool, I guess. Um, but I guess it's just kind of whatever. Um, the part that I love a lot, and I'm probably sounding redundant with this, is the internal storage capacity and the RAM that these phones have. It's just absolutely miraculous. Uh, the, the Ultra and the base model aren't really that different from what you see in typical phones. But the key part here is the, well, I guess I can't just do that. Nope, okay, sorry, I'm not good with computers. The internal storage is really, really nice. You have a 64 gig, which I'm assuming is the base price, 128 or a 256 gig internal storage. Now that's probably been done on other phones before, and I, you know, cool. But it's nice that it's coming to a phone like this. And on top of that, you get four gigs or six gigs of RAM. Now for the longest time, when I had the Samsung Captivate and when I got the Samsung S3, I knew that additional RAM would be necessary based on how the Android architecture ran. I knew that the system would be able to utilize the RAM that was in there and it would perform better if you put more RAM in the phones. Now it might have been a technological limitation at that point, but the Captivate I think had one gig and the S3 I'm pretty sure had three gigs. It might have had two gigs of RAM. And the difference was phenomenal with that extra RAM. Now you don't need more RAM than what the phone will use. You never need more RAM than what a computer will use. But I feel so much better knowing that I will never run into a bottleneck with this amount of RAM. It's overkill and I absolutely love it. And it also is future-proof in that aspect as well. You had a whole bunch of people saying, oh yeah, you don't need this much RAM for PC gaming, you only need this much, you get any more than this and you're dumb. But it's future-proofing. It's something that if you've got it, it'll serve you much better in the future. And in regards to future-proofing, if I'm so happy with my Zenfone 2, why am I considering getting the Zenfone 3? And that mainly has to do with the fact that I support Asus and what they're doing significantly. I, I follow this and I agree with it completely. And I also think it's worth the upgrade. I think the changes with the Zenfone 3 Deluxe more so uh, give much better changes and much needed changes to the phone platform as a whole that I would actually get use out of and would find it worth my time and money to upgrade to that phone. And I never felt that way before because I had the S3 and then I went to the S6. So I didn't go and bounce in between. I mean, if I like a phone, I'm gonna stick with it. But for me to upgrade, the phone also has to prove worthwhile to upgrade. And then let's go on to my biggest gripe about the Zenfone 2 right now, and that's the camera. And it's just trash. It's a very, very slow to focus and even slower to capture a camera. The videos turn out pretty well, but taking pictures in the perfect light and in the perfect scenario when something is standing still, it's great. But right now, I have a 19 month old child that's one year and what, oh gosh, let me fail at math here, one year and seven months of a child that you are trying to capture a picture of. So when they're doing something cute or sweet or smiling, you have a very small window to get that picture taken. And when you get, you get them in frame, you press the button to take the picture, it feels like an eternity before it snaps it. And then it always snaps the picture right when they're done smiling. And it just, it, it just, it is such a huge pet peeve because I want the picture and I want it then and I want it right when I say, take the picture. You don't have that problem with the Samsung phones and you probably don't have that problem with the Apple phones, but I'm not Apple guy whatsoever. So with all that being said, 
they're really trying to upgrade the camera in this model, and I really, really appreciate that. Uh, I'm actually going to switch over here real quick to another tab where I've got the comparison between the Asus Zenfone 2 and the Zenfone 3 model, and the Deluxe is thrown in there just for giggles. Now, the 2, if I go down to it here, has a... Where's the camera at? The camera at. So it's got a 13 megapixel camera, and you know, that, that, that's fine. You know, the megapixels don't really add all that much, um, but it just doesn't, it's just not that good. So there's probably some more information about this, the 16 megapixel laser phase detection autofocus. I mean, that sounds pretty cool. And the OIS four axis, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not a camera dude either, so I don't even know what that means. But the cool part about that, wait, wait a second. Oh yeah, that's the base model. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Let me switch back over. Let me get back into gear and switch back over here. This is going to be a roughly edited video. So, okay. It's a 23 megapixel and then the laser phase detection and all that stuff with the deluxe model. And so that'll be fantastic. And I think the Engadget article was saying that the Zenfone 3 is going to use the Sony lens. And I don't think here it mentions the lens that they're using, so it's pointless to look for it in this page. But the lens would really make a difference. So hopefully the Sony lens will make this camera just completely pop and just change that. And that's the only gripe I have with the phone. So if they fix that, then I am a sold customer for life of these phones as long as they don't screw it up and make something stupid. And then continuing on, it looks like the deluxe model is able to shoot in 4K video at 30 frames. I mean, that's pretty cool. I mean, it's just it just shows the power of the camera more than anything else. And it's got a 8 megapixel 1080p front-facing camera. Now, that is very important because if I switch over again to this screen, and remember the left one here all shows the uh, Zenfone 2 that I currently have. If you look at the secondary display, it's just a 5 megapixel camera. It doesn't say anything about 1080p, 720p, even you know 320 or whatever. The, they, it just the front-facing camera does not shoot video. Now, that might just be because of the software that's with it, because I am able to shoot some video with Snapchat, but I haven't gone into it enough to kind of see you know, what it's going with. But the Deluxe and the other models, well, that's the Ungadget article there. The Deluxe and the other models, they can shoot front-facing video at 1080. That's fantastic. That's going to be a huge improvement and will help a lot when, let's say, I'm trying to capture those front-facing moments uh, with my daughter. And, you know, if I, if I show her the phone instead of the screen, she's going to lose interest. But if she's looking at herself on the screen, she gets the biggest grins you can imagine. And then moving forward through the rest of the stuff that's kind of cool, kind of not cool, whatever the case, they've got the new USB uh, Type-C reversible connector, which is pretty neat. I don't really care if my devices have that. Uh, reversible is always cool because it just it's a fraction of a second that I save every day uh, when I'm trying to plug the phone in. So that's always cool. I always, you know, I love saving fractions of seconds. And the, what is it uh, that they have? The fast charge. And I think that's up here somewhere. Where is that fast charge at? Oh, there we go. Okay, yeah, it's right, right where I'm looking but not looking at the same time. So the fast charge battery, you know, it has it, which is which is cool. 60% in 40 minutes on the Deluxe, 60 in 45 minutes um, on the uh, Ultra version. Now, if we swap over to the Zenfone 2, I really wish they let you compare four phones at a time. That would be fantastic. The uh, Zenfone 2 had fast charging, 60% in 40 minutes. So same thing. They don't save it 3.0 or not with the quick charge. But that's something that's pretty cool that... You know, I, I love the quick charge. I've become spoiled with the quick charge. And I just have to leave it on and I get enough juice to last me the next morning and then into the next day. So I, I, I would not get the base model without that quick charge. So that kind of solidifies my decision in which one I would purchase. And some other things that they have, you know, they have a fingerprint scanner, which that's cool, I guess. I haven't used a fingerprint scanner before, but that's kind of what I thought about the Zenfone 2 when they had the double tap to wake up the screen. I never had that on the Samsung devices, and I love it on this phone. I use it all the time. So that could be something that I just love the fingerprint scanner. I'm assuming that you just put your finger on the phone. It reads that it's your finger, 
and then it unlocks it and opens it up for you so it's even easier than doing the double tap. If that's what it is, great, I'll love it. If it's just a way to unlock the passcode on the phone and I still have to turn the screen on, then I think I won't really care all that much. And then we go down to something that's kind of a big deal to some, kind of not to some others, is the phone battery itself. Now, the difference between all these is that they, they still have a 30,000 milliamp hour battery, except for the Ultra, which has a 4600, but quite honestly, who's gonna get the Ultra? I don't even think I mentioned the Ultra in the screen size, but it's a 6.8 inch screen. So that's a phablet, that's a whole other category of its own, and I'm, I'm not gonna get the phablet, that's just too big. So that one has a bigger battery, that's kinda cool. Now, non-removable lithium ion batteries. That to me is, I guess, another gripe that I have about the phone. I don't like that my phone's battery or any battery is not removable because in the tech world, that's the easiest way to shut down a device that is having some sort of a crash. You disconnect the battery and you know that the machine is gonna be able to turn back on when you reconnect the power source. Uh, whereas here, I, I don't know what would happen if the phone completely crashes, you hold the power button down, but nothing happens. Do you have to wait until it discharges itself completely or not? I don't know, I haven't had the luxury of finding that out. And I haven't also had a problem because if we again switch over to the Zenfone 2, that had the non-removable 3000 milliamp hour battery. Never had a problem with it. Uh, and the battery life, I guess while I'm on that subject, is fantastic with the Zenfone 2. Uh, yeah, the Zenfone 2. I never have any issues with running on a battery unless I don't charge it. And even then I can usually get two days of workage out of this phone. Um, I've made a ton of phone calls today and I've done a lot of work on it all day today uh, from seven o'clock this morning to right now when I'm recording, which is 11.40 p.m. the same day. And I'm at 41% battery life. So that, that's pretty good. That's with a lot of phone calls, a lot of emails, a lot of Facebook, you know, all that sort of stuff, updates, YouTube. And it's, it's I mean, the battery life is just fantastic. So I'm gonna give this a quick charge Probably when I'm done recording this, I'll do a quick charge and then I'll be good for the next day. I might get it to 70% and that's gonna still get me through the entire day tomorrow and I don't even have to worry about it. So as far as I can tell, the 3000 milliamp battery will be just fine and it's gonna probably power this phone phenomenally, especially if it has more power saving measures inside of it. So that's that's not really a big concern to me at all. Now switching back over to the, to the uh, comparison of the three new phones, um, that's pretty much my thoughts on the phone. Like I said, I'm really excited about it. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Asus Zenfone. Uh, I don't even really know much about it other than what the specs say and what that end gadget link says. And it's just, that's enough for me. That's enough for me to go, I like this phone, I wanna own this phone, and I hope that I can be one of the first to maybe get the phone. Um, it just depends on vendors and if they have it available, if I have to do any pre-ordering or anything like that. Because sometimes I don't always like to be the first to get the tech. I waited two months before I got the Zenfone 2, and I think I'll wait a little bit before I get the Zenfone 3, because one, I don't need to have the latest and greatest immediately, that doesn't mean the, the world to me, and two, I'd rather if there's a problem, somebody else figures it out before I go through and do the hassle of switching everything from one phone to another. And there's usually not gonna be any problems, usually they test these things pretty well, but I would just hate to be the guy that takes that chance that one time, and then you've got that problem. So I apologize if you've just been staring at this extremely boring, I don't know, metric of phones for the entire length of however long this video is right now. But I just wanted to share my initial thoughts on the Zenfone 3. Uh, I like it. When I do buy it, I'm gonna do a, probably an unboxing and a review of it, and then probably a follow-up review of it as well. And if, for whatever reason, Asus sees this video and they would like me to do a giveaway of the phone, I would more than happily do a giveaway of the phone because I fully support the phone and I think that somebody watching this video, if you'd want a phone and you'd want to enter a giveaway, I mean, let me know. There's power in numbers, right? So I would love to do that. So thank you again for watching. I'll see you in the next video. And remember, the Don's got your back.